speaking, Mr. Control? I can uh, <coughs> Welcome to our NCAA tournament press conference, pregame tournament press conference with Utah State. We will talk with the Aggies players in just a couple of seconds, and we want to remind you to please refer each question to a specific player, even if you have uh, a response that you want from the general group, please at least do one player at a time so that uh, it'll help our technical people keep up with microphones and cameras and everybody watching on satellite. And satellite would be on the following, Galaxy 17 Transponder 20A, and the downlink frequency is 12086.5. So if each of you have memorized that, you've memorized those frequencies? <laughs> yeah. You're good yeah, to go? Yeah, we got it. All right. Uh, do we have questions for our Utah State? Yes. Uh, Elton Alexander, a uh, plane dealer out of Cleveland, Ohio. I'll direct this to Quinn, but actually would like to have uh, all you guys respond. I counted uh, six different states and three different countries uh, on your roster. Everybody always talks about the locker room and how important that is. Can you guys kind of, you know, how'd you bring that all together and uh, is it still a working process or <laughs> who's in charge of the music and <laughs> oh, what have you? That's a good question. Um, I mean, the cool thing about just playing basketball brings people together that you never meet kind of outside of basketball. And I mean, we're fortunate enough to have people from yeah, all over the US and all over the world. Um, and I think just our love for the game has really brought us together. And I think generally, um, we just rotate through who, who has the music in the locker room. Um, but I mean, it just, it's just a brotherhood. Um, and people that all consider, I mean, brothers for the rest of my life. Um, as far as that goes, I think it's been pretty natural. Um, I don't. Sometimes you can feel a, a team forcing um, being friends, but uh, I feel like this year it's been really big that we establish a culture, kind of reestablish the culture um, of family and togetherness at Utah State, and uh, I feel like we've done that really well. I, th I feel like it's natural as we've come together. Yeah, I, th I think it's been <clears throat> incredibly helpful um, as far as developing the chemistry. I think, you know, because we all come from so many different backgrounds, it, it, it keeps us away from, from developing any type of click or anything like that. So, you know, when we're hanging out together, it's, it, it's everyone together. It's not groups of three and groups of four and stuff like that. So fortunately, also, we have multiple of our American-born players are bilingual. So that's helped. Um, I, I would assume that's helped with, with our Portuguese players and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's definitely been a fun experience for us getting to know each other. Um, we're a group of guys that love to play basketball and the love of the game is the same. Um, we all love to play basketball and we all love to play with each other and I think we, we're we just a group of guys that, that just, that just we're, not, we're not worried about anything. We're just, we just love playing with each other and that helps a lot. We're not, we're not, we don't have much egos. We're, we just love each other and we love playing basketball. That's it. It's simple. Jeremiah Jensen with KSL Sports in Salt Lake City. Uh, question for Nimi. Growing up in Portugal, did you follow the NCAA tournament? And if so, now that you're here, is this a dream of yours? What's this like for you to be here? I, I've, never, I've never followed it growing up, but last year when I was being recruited, I heard of it and, and yeah, I saw it was pretty nice. So <laughs> it's, <laughs> um, it's really nice being here and being a part of it. So I can't wait for it and I hope I play we will have a good game and get a win. Question for Sam. This group really, you guys haven't been to the tournament, so this is new for everybody. Uh, but is, is it at the same time, is that kind of helpful because you guys don't have to I don't know, maybe the pressure's not there and just you, you guys are excited to be here. What's the feeling among the team now that you've come here, you know, being picked to finish ninth? And we've talked about that a lot, but maybe the, the expectations weren't that you were going to be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's, uh, like we've talked about before, expectations preseason from those around us weren't very high. But 
as a team, we felt that we could we could really do some damage, and um, we've obviously grown and grown and grown throughout the season. But this is this is obviously hopefully not a once in a lifetime opportunity for some of us, but it, it's it's something that you have to enjoy. I think our our coaching staff and us as a team have done a good job this week of not not trying to worry about the outside stuff as far as you know the media and 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 all the excitement around it, but trying to focus on on Washington and our game coming up and. You know our our uh, our scouting reports and prep and practices have been the same that they've been all year. So, you know, as far as mentally, I don't I don't assume that I don't anticipate that we'll come out really nervous or jittery. Fortunately, we got to play in our championship game on Saturday in the Mountain West tournament, and and that felt like it was a big game too. So, we did a pretty good job there. So, hopefully, we'll do a good job tomorrow as well. Matisse. Matisse Thibel might be the uh, Scott Gerard, by the way, of the uh, Zone Sports Network. Matisse Thibel might be one of the best defensive players you guys have seen all year. Block shots, steals, averaging three and a half steals a game. Sam, this is for you. How do you? Uh, what do you see from him when you look at him on de defensively, and 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 how do you try to uh, get around a player that has that kind of a uh, skill set? Yeah, he's uh, he's a great athlete, and he's. I mean, this the. The report says that he's about six four, six five, but his his arms you can tell. I mean, watching film you can see how long and how athletic, and um, he does a great job anticipating passing lanes and and blocking shots from behind. So, you know, they have a lot of good athletes and and guys with length in their zone. So, we're just gonna have to to play the way that we've played all year, and that we do that by sharing the ball, by moving the ball, by trying to be smart, high IQ basketball players, and you know he's gonna make some plays. That's it's what this tournament is about, and you know the best players make plays. But hopefully, we can we can minimize what he does by by moving the ball and by by not letting the ball stick and by doing things the way that we've done things all year. Mark Herman from Newsday in New York. This is for any one of you or all of you. Uh, this this is a good introduction to the rest of the nation for your school. Can you describe a little bit about your school and what brought you there? Let's go ahead and start at the end, come this way, so we know who's going to speak. Um, I mean, for me personally, coming to Utah State, I mean, Utah State had a rich tradition in basketball um, and something that each, I feel like each one of us, when we got recruited, they showed us, I mean, videos of the spectrum where we play our home games, and it's just a crazy atmosphere, and it's something that you, you want to play at a school like that where you have the community behind you. Um, and then also for me, being that I was going to go on a mission for my church, and Utah State has, deals with that. Um, so just going into that situation with the coaching staff that understood that, that I was going to go for two years and come back, um, also helped me um, choose to attend Utah State. And I mean, I definitely made the right choice, and I've, I've loved it ever since. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's Utah State. Um, we're in Logan, Utah, and I think it's just – it's a really awesome school. If you could ever look up pictures, um, it's a really beautiful just environment uh, to live in um, up against the mountains. Um, but besides that, it's a really great academic school and, and like you said, uh, really good at basketball. Um, they had some really good years in the past um, where the fan base was really behind, um, selling out almost every single game. And I think that we all saw that um, and kind of wanted to be a part of bringing it back. And I think that's what brought a lot of us to Utah State. Yeah, I, I grew up a Utah State fan. Both my both my parents graduated from Utah State, so for me it was it was an easy choice to to go play at Utah State. I felt like it was the the best the best fit both academically, um, basketball wise, of course, and and just being close to family. But you know, for those that have been following college basketball for a long time, Utah State used to be a regular in this tournament. Um, and like Abel said, it's been a few years, but we're excited to be back and we're excited to represent our school and our university and. Uh, Hopefully, hopefully we represent them well starting tomorrow. Utah State is a, a school that um, would be perfect for me because of uh, they have passionate fans, um, good, good conditions, good, good, a good coaching staff, and everybody, everybody on the on the school cares about you. And and I really wanted to go there and um, having players like these like working for me and helping me out. It's really nice and having having a good um, a good growth through, throughout the year um, with the, with them is really nice um, and the and the fact that we made it here it's it's really nice too. 
Hi, Chip Scoggins from the Minneapolis Star Tribune. Quinn, you get a new coach for your senior year that can be challenging or difficult. What, what's allowed this team to kind of have that seamless transition to a new staff and have this kind of success? Um, I mean, just Coach Smith in general. I mean, yeah, going into a coaching change, there's always the unknowns. Um, but just Coach Smith was the perfect hire. And I mean, our first meeting with him, he comes in, it's I think six in the morning or something. He just wanted to meet us real quick. And he's coming in, bouncing off the walls, his energy, and it's just something that's contagious. And I think that's something that he's passed down from that first meeting on um, to now. And just the energy and culture that he's brought um, and just the, the way he coaches and instills confidence in each one of us and the other coaching staff lets you play basketball, I mean, how, how you're supposed to play. I mean, we've all been playing since we were little. Um, and he, he makes it so that we're, we're playing the game and not thinking. Um, and basketball becomes a lot easier when you're out of your own head and you know your coach believes in you, you know your teammates believe in you. Um, and it's just been a, a great year. The whole coaching staff has that mentality, but it starts with Coach Smith. Sean Harrison with the Herald Journal. Abel, could you tell us a little bit about your, how, you, how far you've come when you were a walk-on, weren't playing very much, and then all of a sudden you start, become a starter, and you've started pretty much the last half of the season? Um, yeah, it's been an interesting journey. Um, I mean, I had spotty minutes at the start of the season. Um, and it's kind of been like that. This is my third year at Utah State. It's kind of been that roller coaster, not really knowing what to expect. But um, Coach Smith did a great job at meeting with me, um, knowing telling me that he has confidence in me and um, what he expected of me. And so uh, I kind of just stuck with it, just the same as I always have. And um, I'd like to say that a lot changed, but really uh, I think I just took advantage of the opportunities that were given to me. Um, I prepared the same way for every single game, prepared the same way in practice. Um, and luckily I got a couple opportunities that, that kind of uh, paved the way to, for me to start and for me to kind of get a solid, uh, solid playing time. And so, um, yeah, it's been great, but uh, I'm, I have to give the credit to Coach Smith for just believing in me and uh, giving me this opportunity. This will be our final question for the players. Uh, Art Teal, Sports Press Northwest. Amy, did, um, could you talk a little bit about your basketball, uh, how you got interested in the game, and uh, if you had followed an NBA team, and any of them were a particular hero to you? Can you repeat it? Can you repeat it? The question. The question. The question. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you, uh, uh, your basketball heritage and how much, how much you may have followed the NBA, whether you were interested in a particular player? Um, I grew up, I never, I never actually, I grew up playing basketball from since then. Um, I, I've always watched the NBA since I was like 14. And since then I, I watched it every, every year, every week, every, almost every day. Um, I like, I like a lot of players, especially big men that can, that can do a lot of things. I try to model my game like Anthony Davis, players like that. And it's, it's hard, but. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Terrific job. Thank you. We appreciate it. Coach Smith, in just a couple of minutes.
Craig Smith. <laughs> Coach Craig Smith from Utah State. Same, uh, same rules apply. If we have questions to start, go ahead. Uh, Elton Alexander with the Plain Dealer out of Cleveland, Ohio. I asked the players and I asked you, you got a locker room with players from six different states and three different countries. So how do you, how much of that is choice? How much of that is chance? Uh, you're the coach. Obviously, first year, I'm, some of it I'm sure you inherited. But just talk about that a little bit. I mean, everybody talks about locker room culture and how important that is. So uh, have at it. Let us know what, you, what we got of what you got. Well, um, that's a great question, and it's something you think a decent amount about. Um, but at the end of the day, so a lot, you know, obviously it's my first year, been here for um, just short of a year now. Um, so at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you're from, who you are, it matters what you're about and what kind of character you have and how are you going to represent. You know, recruiting is the lifeline of your program. And so um, you better recruit people first. So whether that's a young man from, from Utah or Oklahoma or Portugal, we got the Portuguese connection, right? We have two of the three uh, players in Division I basketball. We call them the Wonder Twins, like the old uh, Wonder Twin Powers activate. <laughs> um, but, um, but at the end of the day, you got to be able to identify young men that can flourish uh, in, for our case, in Cache Valley, in Logan, Utah, um, and that can flourish in your style of play. So our style of play is different than Program X, right? And so a guy like, um, there's going to be guys that are going to really be set up for success in our program that might struggle in a different program. But that being said, there might be guys that really flourish in a different program that might struggle in our program. And so as a coach, you got to really identify the types of players that are going to do well. It's easy to go spot a guy that can run fast, jump high, but that doesn't mean he's going to be a player for you. Right? So you got to dig deeper. It's like Nick Saban said, you got to peel the onion back seven layers. Right? You go to, you go to a high school, you got to ask the administrative assistant, hey, what, what do you know about this kid? You got to go ask the uh, custodian, what do you know about this kid? Go ask the, the history teacher, what do you know about this guy? And pretty soon, things start kind of lining up. And my first day on the job at, at uh, Utah State, I got hired on a Sunday. On Monday, I met with the academic people. I met with the compliance people. I met with strength and conditioning coach. Met with our athletic trainer. And you can go right on down the line. Tell me about our team. Tell me about the program. Tell me about this individual, this guy, this guy, right? And you do that, and pretty soon, things start kind of checking out. And then day two, and part of day one, met with each individual student athlete. Tell me about the program. Tell me about academics. Tell me about strength and conditioning. Tell me about, right? So you do your homework. And we've been so fortunate. I've been coaching. I was just telling um, this young man to my right um, about, I've been coaching for 23 years. And I've been very, very fortunate to be on very, very good teams, coach a team that played in the national championship game been on some teams that have struggled, been on a couple NCAA tournament teams, and, and I feel like the luckiest man on earth to be able to coach this team because going into the year, we were one of the, we were one of the 50 youngest teams in the country. Right? We dressed 12 guys, and six of them are freshmen, including the one when we had the open walk-on tryouts. <laughs> uh, um, so, and he's one of the freshmen. So to be able to have this group come together and do what we've done, it's been beyond magical to say the least. You know, we were ranked number nine in the preseason polls and we're a number eight seed in the NCAA tournament. It's pretty incredible. Jacob Myers with the Columbus Dispatch. When you took this job, what type of player did you think Sam was? You, you've probably talked about it before, but for those who haven't seen him on national stage like this, why has he been so successful in your system? Well, first of all, Sam is a young man of incredible character, and he's like the all-American type of kid. You know, the, the country's going to see one of the best players in the country play tomorrow. Uh, certainly getting ready for the, when I was, uh, when, 
when I was contacted about possibly applying for the, the job, obviously I was doing my research, um, and certainly Sam was a guy that really, really stood out. Sam was a guy that had, he was the one guy in our program that had some accolades coming into the season. He was the third team all-conference player last year, and certainly watching the video, even though our style of play is totally different than the style of play last year, you could see like this kid, he's got great feel for the game, he understands the game, incredibly unselfish, and the common theme that, that everybody had said about Sam Merrill was all Sam cares about is winning. It's all he cares about is winning. He doesn't care if he's an all-league player. He doesn't care how many shots he gets a night. Um, and that was easy to see once you start going. I remember our first practice this summer. I said, Sam, if we're going to get to where we need to go, and that's winning the Mountain West, we need you to be much more vocal. The rest of the year, I mean, li literally the rest of the year, he is the most vocal. He is so cerebral, so intelligent. We're very detailed with scouting reports. Sam knows not only what the guy he's guarding is going to do, he could tell you what the, the five man's going to do, the four man's going to do, and he's yelling it out. Like, he'll be guarding his guy, and he's yelling back at Nimi, Nimi, <laughs> watch the duck in, right, or whatever it might be. And so, and then you get into the season, and it's just so obvious. Like, early on in the year, because of our youth, and we really struggled shooting the ball early, not because we had bad shooters. I think it was like a guy like Brock Miller is a freshman. So the speed of the game is going super fast right, for him. And once Christmas passed, he got into a groove where he started playing like a sophomore. The game slowed down. And Sam would come up to me because he had to do so much, of, carry so much of the load. And he said, Coach, I think we need to run this to get, get Brock going, or we need to do this to get Diogo going, or we got to, you know, maybe a few more post touches for Nimi, you know, or whatever it might be. And so he's so unselfish. And then at the end of the day, you know, you think back to a game like New Mexico where we controlled mo at New Mexico. We, were, uh, we started out the league one and two, so we'd won two in a row. So we were three and two in league play at the time and we're on the road to New Mexico. They come roaring back. That's one of the toughest places in the country to play. And we're down one. We just hold it for last shot. We're either going to win it or we're going to lose it. And we run a play for Sam. It basically gets triple teamed. And then one guy drops off and he gets double teamed. And a lot of times the best score, no matter what, is just going to fire that shot up. And he makes the right play, the right read, and delivers it over his shoulder to Abel Porter, who he had been playing with since fifth grade. And Abel makes a game-winning three um, with like 0.7 seconds to go. And he's done that continually all year. Guys love playing with him. We're number, uh, we're number nine in the country in assists right, on the year. And 62% of our baskets are, are assisted, which is an incredibly high number. And it all starts when you have a guy like that that's so unselfish. And so when your best player is your hardest worker, everybody falls in line. And I could talk another 10 minutes on Sam if you want, <laughs> but that about sums it up. Uh, Art Teal, Sports Press Northwest. Uh, Craig, I, I think I read where you guys, your roster has uh, six or seven uh, returned LDS, uh, returned from LDS missions. Yes. How much of an advantage is that in terms of uh, maturity and the ability to trust that these guys know what they're doing? Well, certainly um, it's been fantastic because all, all those guys are just incredible people, first and foremost. Um, you know, obviously, generally speaking, they're a, uh, a couple years older. Um, there's certainly a sense of maturity. Communication skills are tremendous. Um, but like anything, it's, you know, um, uh, we have training table on campus, right? And, and so, you know, you get down to practice, guys go to, well, they Sometimes they don't want to go to a training table. They want to go home and eat with their, their wife, you know, if they're you know, our guys that are married. So it's always different, but it's been, I could go right down the line. Quinn Taylor, Quinn's one of our two seniors, and you know, I always say he's like, you remember the old commercial, E.F. Hutton, right? When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. That's Quinn Taylor. And we call him the godfather or the grandfather. Either one uh, suffices, but his leadership um, skills have been impeccable. You know, I know he was just up here earlier with Namiyash Keda. So Quinn, you know, you know, I don't know how many minutes he played last year, right around 20 a game. Uh, it's hard to keep him out of the, off the floor. You know, he's so good that way. But what he's done, certainly for our team, because he's, he's a guy that every single guy in our program has utmost re respect for, no matter wh who you are, where you come from. And, um, and then he's just been like such a big brother to Namiyash. Um, just teaching them the ins and outs of the game, 
the ins and outs of the league. You know, it's been incredible that way. So certainly, though, um, it's nice to have. Uh, Craig, Chip Scoggins from the Minneapolis Star Tribune. You mentioned you guys were picked to finish ninth in your league. What was your first impression, summer workouts, when you got your first glimpse of your team? What do you, what do you think your expectations were? Well, from the get-go, our goal was to get to the NCAA tournament and win when we get there. We want to get to the top of the Mountain West Conference champions. We have a, we have a plethora of, guy, of young men from Utah, a guy like Sam, Brock, Abel Porter, um, grew up in the state of Utah, uh, where their dream was to play basketball at Utah State. So inherently, you have a ton of pride. Those guys grew up, you know, Sam talked about after we won the conference tournament championship about being at the game in 2011 when they cut down the nets. And he remembers it vividly. And so you have, a, I remember um, that Monday when I met with all those people, I met with Sam's parents that night. And we were talking about the glory days. And, and so, you know, it's always impossible until you make it possible. And, you know, it's uh, I always, there's a quote I remember, it's a, it's a funny thing about life. If you refuse to accept anything but their best, you very often get it. And so we had high expectations from day one. That, and we talked about, we, our guys started a, um, I'm, I suck with technology, although I'm good with Twitter. Um, uh, or it was like Bill Belichick said, snap face and insta chat. <laughs> I say that to the team all the time, but our guys started their own, um, I don't think I've ever shared this before, but our guys started their own, um, what do you call it, group text, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that what you mm -hmm. call it? And so, yeah, I just figured out how to do a group text. I mean, I knew how to do it. I didn't know how to name it. So I, I did it with our staff, like, finally in January. Like, wow, coach, <laughs> staff, that's great. But, um, but on the top of the, I think Sam started it. And on the top of the, uh, uh, the name of the group text, is that what you say? The name of it, the title, sure. was Mountain West Champs. And so, um, you know, our guys, it was a very emotional win. Well, we beat Boise State in overtime. We were fighting a lot of sickness that night. That was our fourth to last regular season game. Beat San Diego State at home. And everyone was talking about Nevada, which was the next game. But we had to beat San Diego State, obviously, to make that Nevada game mean something. Beat them first time in Mount West Conference history that we'd been a part of, that we'd beaten them. Obviously beat Nevada, first time we'd beat a ranked opponent since 2007. And so now everyone's talking about the hangover game, right? Are you gonna have enough gas in the tank? All that stuff, because we had a quick turnaround at Colorado State. And Sam said something in the group text, now it's here, let's give everything we've got and stay locked in so we can get what we said from day one in our group text, you know, Mountain West champ. And so that was a pretty um, neat thing that way. So our expectations, I've always believed as a person, as a coach, as a father, and in anything you do in life, why would you ever put limitations on yourself? Like, why would you ever limit yourself as a person in anything you're doing? Why would you ever put limits on yourself in your program? And so our guys is buying from day one. I think what's maybe helped us in a weird kind of way is because we are one of the 50 youngest teams in the country. And so we only had, and I know our local guys are, have heard this, you know, you know, over and over and over again, but we only had seven guys on this, or excuse me, we only had four guys in this program that ever played or averaged more than seven minutes a game. And so, um, so in some ways it hurts you because you lack some experience, but I think in some ways it's helped us because we just have this youthful exuberance, <laughs> right, that we're going to conquer the world and nobody's going to tell us any different. And so just the chemistry we've had, the camaraderie, and a common goal has been incredible. And that goes to these young men that were up here and obviously all the other guys in our program. This will be our final question for the coach. Uh, Lauren Kirschman, the News Tribune. Uh, Matisse Seibel is one of the best defenders in the country and really unique in what he does. What are your impressions of him now that you've been looking at Washington? Um, I've had to take a lot of Advil over the last four games because he's a headache. Uh, uh, he's like... Um, I can't remember, I think I heard this on a telecast, but I think I, we use a ton of football and boxing analogies and everything we do. And I would, he's, he's almost like Deion Sanders in football. Like, you know, when Deion Sanders played, it was like he eliminated whatever side of the field. And he's so instinctive, so quick twitch, so long, and his hands are just so fast, right? And um, for a guy to average playing zone, over three steals a game and two block shots a game, 
is, is incredible. And, and, he does, and he does it while staying disciplined, right? He's not just running all over the place gambling and, and out of position. So he dominates the game in such a different way that I'm not sure I've ever seen it, you know, from that respect. So um, you, constantly, you gotta always account for where he's at. Their team forces 17 and a half turnovers a game in the Pac-12. That's hard to do. And they're doing it mainly just in the half court. And so he's certainly a, a monster part of it. But their whole team, I mean, you know, um, Newell's the player of the year for them. Dickerson was the first team all league kid last year in the Pac-12. And David Crisp has had a phenomenal season se senior year. I actually did a home visit with him, him and his parents, when I was uh, an assistant at Nebraska. His mom can really cook. Good. <laughs> yeah, it was incredible, that food. I was like, <laughs> wow. Well, thanks very much for uh, – we, we'd hope for more enthusiasm, quite frankly, but <laughs> – Hey, we can keep going all day. I, I, I'm I, telling I, you. Yeah. We, we, I got we didn't, all kinds of time. We don't play until 6 p.m. tomorrow. Yeah, unfortunately, we have more press conferences what? here to follow. Yeah, Come on. we found out there's other teams here. <laughs> but thanks very much, Coach. Right. We appreciate Thank it. Thanks for coming out. Go Aggies. <laughs>
Kenny Williams and Cameron Johnson are our players from University of North Carolina. And again, if you would specifically direct your question to either Kenny or Cameron, that would be beneficial for those who are trying to do the microphones and the cameras and have them uh, specifically up. If you have a question, just find either of our microphones and um, we'll get things started with the first question. While we wait for that, I'll give you the uh, downlink frequencies and the transponder numbers for the satellite feed. Galaxy 17 transponder 20A downlink frequency is 12086.5. 12086.5. Okay, first question. Go ahead, sir. Brett Freelander, North State Journal. For either of the players, how important has Garrison been um, this season for you guys? And when did you kind of see him start to, to grow into what he has become as consistent as be, he's become? Um, he's been huge, uh, you know, here, especially in ACC play. Um, he's been the anchor of our defense. And, um, you know, the way he's played the ball screen has kind of made our defense uh, a lot stronger because you know you can't they can't attack off the ball screen the way the teams have uh, somewhat in the past uh, so his growth on the defensive end has been huge for us and um, you know I think it was around uh, you know after Christmas break is when he really started to turn a corner and his defense really took off he also provides a bit of an offensive uh, presence down low uh, he's been finishing around the basket well he's doing a pretty good job on both ends of the floor Jacob Myers with the Columbus Dispatch. Cameron, how important do you buy the kind of sentiment that you have to be playing your best at this time of the year? And although you may not have won the conference tournament, you guys do feel like you're playing your best at this time? Um, yeah, I think we're getting there. I think we've been improving all year. So I think this is going to be the best, you know, products we put out all year. But um, you have to. You have to or you'll go home. So, you know, there's a lot more at stake. Uh, there's a lot more to play for right now. And you just got to embrace it and do your best. Ross Martin, Inside Carolina. Uh, Cameron, how's your health? I know you sat out uh, Monday and Tuesday with practice. Any update on that? Oh, it's good. Um, it's March, so, you know, some people are a little bit more sore than others, but everybody's feeling something. Uh, and I'm all right. My shin was just a little sore coming off the AC tournament, uh, and I'm feeling pretty good now. Did you practice last? Yeah, yeah, I practiced last two days. Cam's just old. Yeah, <laughs> he's just old. Uh, Ryan McFadden from Nyon. This question is for either uh, Kenny or Cam. Uh, how much does playing in the ACC help you guys for playing, uh, preparing for the NCAA tournament? Um, well, three of the four one seeds are AC teams. So we've been playing against the best of the best all year. Um, it's a demanding schedule. Uh, you play a lot of good teams night in and night out. So you can't really take you know weeks off. Uh, so that definitely prepares you for something like this. George Willis, uh, New York Post. Cameron, uh, just want to get your thoughts on Iona team that struggled uh, early part of the year but is coming to this tournament having won uh, I guess 10 straight games oh uh, they've won 10 straight yeah like you said uh, they shoot the ball well they they like to get up and down they got some guys that can score the ball um, I mean, so we're just gonna have to play our game we're going to do what we do but you know from everything we've seen on film they got some guys that can do some things pretty well uh, they got a good guard in McGill they got a guy who can score you know down low in a gee and uh, so you know, we just, we got to go out there. We got to play our game. We got to rebound. We got to defend, do everything coach wants us to do. Jacob Myers with the Columbus Dispatch. Kenny, a lot of people say that you have to have great guards to win in a tournament like this, experienced guards for that matter. In what ways other than he, you know, he's a freshman, but in what ways is, would you say that Kobe is experienced? <laughs> um, you know, Kobe's a player, um, so he's not, I don't think he hasn't played like a freshman all season. Um, but you know, he's, Kobe's played in big games. We've had, I don't know, we've had a lot of big games this year. So um, he's had big game experience. I know March is different, but um, you know, knowing him, it's not, the, the moment isn't too big. Um, he'll just go out and play his game. And that's what I'll tell him tomorrow. Um, just go out and be you and, and play your game and, and we'll come out fine. This is either for either one of you two. It's Nancy Armour with USA Today. Um, Roy's never lost a game in the first round. How does he get you guys to stay focused or, or get you guys prepared for a game like this, especially when you are a number one seed playing a 16 in a theoretically very lopsided matchup? Start with Kenny. Um, coach is all about respecting everyone. 
um, but fearing no one, and that's exactly what he said. He told us, um, you know, you step between you step between those lines. Um, especially in March, you're going to get everybody's best shot. Everybody's playing for their life. Everybody's playing for their season. So we have to we have to take the same mindset. We can't go out there and overlook anybody and um, you know think it's just going to be easy just because we're stepping out there and just because we're North Carolina. So um, you know tomorrow we're just going to step out there and we're going to respect them, but we're also going to play our games. Cameron, you want to respond to that question? I'm just adding on to that. Uh, he emphasizes it. He emphasizes that we need to play hard. We need to play well. Uh, Iona has been in the tournament four years in a row now, is what he told us. Um, so these guys, they're seniors. They've, they've, uh, they've played in a handful of them. So you know, he emphasized that to us. And you know, we got to go out there and play. I'm curious about that experience with Coach Williams when he has been in this situation so many times. Is he the type of coach that goes back and says, we had this type of game, we had this type of opponent when we had this team in 96 or 93 or whatever, or is he a coach that's very much, we're looking at the next game? I think it depends on the situation. There will be times where he'll bring up something that might have happened in the past or reference it, but most of the time he's kind of in the moment, um, kind of focused on what the other team does and how we want to attack them. And we've been watching film on, on Iona now, and we've been preparing for them, you know, you know, scouting them out, running, running against what they like to run on offense, you know, defending that. So we're, we're pretty locked into this one. We know we can't get any further if we don't win this one. Jaden Daly from Daily Dose of Hoops. Cam, you spoke about how this tournament run means a little more to you because you weren't on the national championship squad from two years ago. How much more motivation do you have going into this weekend? Um, I have a lot. I can't sit here and tell you that Kenny and Luke don't have motivation. Uh, it's also their senior years, and obviously they want to be a part of, of something special like another Final Four run. But for me personally, I mean, I've never been there. So, you know, I'm, I'm really excited for this opportunity, just trying to embrace it as best I can and uh, make the most of it. Mark Herman from Newsday, New York, for both Kenny and Cam. Uh, just to build on what you were saying before about how seriously you take this, uh, what did you think last year when Virginia lost to a number 16 seed? Did you watch it, and would you, what, what was your reaction to it? Kenny? We were, all, um, we were actually all watching it in our meeting room at the hotel uh, together. And uh, you know, it's just something that you, know, you don't really expect it, especially with a team like Virginia. Um, but you know, we we just didn't want it. We we told each other let's let's not let that be us, and so we wanted to focus in a little bit more, um, going into our game. Um, but it, I mean, we all were shocked. Yeah, I'd say shocked was what it was. We were watching the meeting room, like you said, and everybody was just like, "Whoa!" <laughs> Anyone else? Terrific job by our players. Thanks very much. Thank Coach you. Coach Williams will be here momentarily. Thank you.
myself, so I do. I met somebody the other day, so they, they, they played golf with me, and I can't remember who it is. I hit a, uh, literally 100 yards from North Carolina Bay when I was down there. Yeah. Over in Naples. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, up in Columbus. Oh, yeah, just the outdoor house. It's cool. Yeah. Um, like south, on the south side of Hendersonville, Platte Rock. You love it. Yeah, that's 10 minutes from me. Kim, you're... Really? Yeah, that's ten minutes. We're having a good conversation up here in case you guys were interested. <laughs> Coach Williams, uh, nice enough to join us despite being well under the weather. So we will uh, move on with uh, your questions for Coach. Yep. Well, go ahead and start with a statement. Okay, we're the same thing everybody's going to say. We're happy to be here. We're thrilled that we're still playing, and some of the other guys are not. Uh, uh, we had a good practice this morning. We'll shoot around here is all we'll do this afternoon, but. Uh, Kenny, Luke, and Cam have done a great job of leading our team. And then uh, Garrison, uh, Nasir, Kobe, uh, those guys have really done a great job for us, uh, helping the seniors get from game to game. And uh, Kobe's been a uh, scoring machine for us several times, and we've needed it every time. But uh, he's been great at listening to Cam, Kenny, and Luke, and also understanding he's pretty doggone good himself. We'll open it up for questions. Start in the front. Thanks. Uh, Coach, Ryan McFadden from the Ionian. Uh, just what are your, from film, have you seen from Iona, what are your impressions of the team? Well, uh, every time I hear the word Iona, it reminds me of Jim Valvano, Iona College. And he said, you own a college? You know, but <laughs> you have to be old enough for me and Feinstein, we remember that. But uh, uh, when I watched them, I watched them play against Monmouth in the finals of the conference tournament. Uh, Tim Cluis, good guy, good guy. He was Danny Green's high school coach, so I've known him for a long time. And I'm not trying to act like we're bosom buddies or anything, but I thought he was a really good coach then, thinking even more so now. I uh, watched part of that championship game and even watched part of the championship game last year when they played. Uh, but playing them for us, we've got to understand they'll have five guys outside the three-point line a lot, and all five guys can shoot the three-point shot. Uh, earlier in the year, it was 40-something percent of the shots they took were three-pointers. The last four or five games, it's been over 50%. So we realize we've got to get out on the floor and cover out there. So that means Luke May and Garrison, those guys got to get out and cover the three-point line. They do like to play at a fast pace, but so do we. So we understand that part of it. But just trying to cover them on the offensive end where the three-point shot and, uh, and the free throw line are two huge parts of their offense. And it's the easiest way for you to get beat if you give them free shots at the foul line or free shots from three-point line. So that's the biggest emphasis for us. Brett Friedlander, North State Journal. Roy, um, did, did Cam, his shins, was, was that a, a wear and tear kind of situation? Or did something happen last week in Charlotte and was holding him out of practice a couple of days just a precaution? Are you concerned? No, I'm not concerned. Well, I'm concerned, yeah. But it's not something I'm laid awake at night about kind of thing. Doug and Cam and the doctors have looked at it. Uh, taking x-rays or whatever it is they do. And uh, uh, I think it just flared up last week. I don't know if there's one specific inc incident that made it happen, uh, but we thought it was good. I mean, he's, he's 23 years old and I held him out of a shooting practice. You know, it's just, <laughs> my God, I told him when you get to be 23, you get to hold out of shooting practices. But uh, uh, then yesterday he did almost everything. Today he did everything and uh, doesn't seem to have any problems. But you're talking about a guy who's probably handled pain for a longer period of his life than any basketball player I've ever been around. And so he does a great job of that. But uh, I fully expect that uh, he'll play the way he's been playing. Jacob Myers with the Columbus Dispatch. For Kobe, a, lo a lot of people talk about you need experienced guards to make deep runs. What makes Kobe different than other freshman guards in this tournament? And then when he's not on the floor, how does that kind of change? You know, I don't know um, what he's different from other freshman point guards in the tournament, but he's, you know, we've played 30 something games. We're 26 and 6 or 27 and 7 or something like that. Uh, so he's played 30, 35 games. Uh, we held him out of one game because his, I think it was his foot. I'm not sure. He can't even remember that long ago. But uh, I like scoring point guards, and Kobe is a scoring point guard. Uh, he's a guy that scored more points in high school basketball in the state of North Carolina and anybody in history. So I'm not going to get him and say, okay, you can't shoot. Um, it'd be sort of silly, and I do some silly things, but that's not one of them. But he has an ability to put the ball in the basket, 
Uh, he's a good shooter and I think will eventually be a great shooter. He can attack the basket really, really well. Uh, he has no fear attacking the basket. Uh, he's better defensively than anybody ever even thinks about. Uh, he's won our defensive player of the game. I think the second most of anybody on the team. Garrison's won it the most. Kobe's won it the second most. So he's a complete and all-around player. And, you know, the kids nowadays aren't like freshmen were 20 years ago. I mean, kids nowadays are freshmen. They've, they've been everywhere. And I can remember when I started coaching, we'd tell a kid, you come here, we're going to take you to Hawaii once every four years. Well, every high school player goes to Hawaii now, so it's no big deal. Uh, but he's extremely gifted. Uh, extremely competitive, extremely uh, uh, good. I mean, it's just, he's, he's really a good player, and really good players even in their freshman year, whether you go all the way back to uh, Purvis Ellison or Michael Jordan, what some freshmen have done great things in this tournament, and usually they did it during the regular season as well. Roy Nancy Hammer with USA Today. I've got two questions for you. You said earlier in the week that you're, the teams that have either won titles or made really deep runs have always had really good weeks of practice before the tournament starts. So wondering how your guys were earlier this week. And then you've never lost in the first round. How do you keep guys? <laughs> if we lose, don't let me know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> um, but how do you keep If that's team? perceived as a threat, <laughs> it's true, OK? <laughs> Um, but how do you keep guys focused and, and you know, engaged in a game like this mm -hmm. where you are theoretically a, a pretty heavy favorite? Yeah. Uh, first part of the question, uh, the team that came to mind quickly when I started thinking about that and talking about it, because we've had a lot of teams that really got better as this season went along and played their best basketball at the end, but was the 9 team, because I never could convince them that you had to guard somebody. They just sort of thought we'd outscore them. But uh, those last three to four weeks of the season that year, they – really concentrated hard on the defensive end of the floor and really got a lot better. Uh, this team, uh, we just finished practicing an hour and a half ago or something like that, and we had a really good practice this morning. It doesn't mean that they don't screw it up and make a mistake, but that's the game of basketball. But I think our practices have been good this year. I think a lot of it is because we push so much, but I think a lot of it is because with Luke and Cam and Kenny, they sort of drag everybody else along. It's, it's an experienced group that does that. And I think you have to play well. I've, I mean, excuse me, practice well. I've never had a good team that practiced sorry every day and then played great. I've never had that. But I think this team has gotten better as we've practiced all year long. And, and particularly, I'd say the last couple of weeks, we've shortened practice a little bit. And uh, perhaps they've realized that and focused even a little bit more, or just that they've gone out and done their work. Uh, trying to get focused on playing against everybody, regardless of who you're playing in your seed, is something I've thought ever since the first day I became a coach. And my first couple of years as an assistant, we had some bad memories of those first round games. Uh, I mean, I remember uh, over in Raleigh, Black Sunday, us and Duke both lost when everybody thought we were going to win and we were playing close to home. <coughs> so I've always tried to focus on now we're in the tournament. But if you're looking down the road, and this is corny, I tell our guys all the time, if you're looking down the road at what might happen, that's usually where you're going, down the road back home. And we try to focus on just playing this next game. And, you know, I guess somebody could use it as uh, ammunition, but they had somebody asked me something the day, day or two ago about the tournament. I couldn't even remember who our pairing was in the second round. And I was being truthful. I got one of the two teams right. I didn't get the other one right. And somebody could probably use that, but, I mean, it's, it really is that we're trying to get ready to play our owner. And I tell the guys, come on now, if we play well, maybe they'll let us stay around and play another one. But I, I think the kids are experienced enough to understand that part of it as well, too. Was there a, a light bulb moment for, for Garrison, uh, especially on the defensive end, uh, that kind of got him to playing as consistently as he's been recently? You know, he, he, was, he was OK last year defensively. But I think at the start of the season, you look and you have Luke and you have Kenny and you have Cam, and what can they do? They can all three score. Kenny's good defensively, the other a little bit of a liability at sometimes. You look and you have Kobe, who's a freshman who can score, but you think, well, freshman can't defend. And you look at Nasir and you say, well, freshman can't defend. And so I think that he saw that because he's very bright and says, I have a better niche with this team if I do a good job on defense if coach can count on me. And then I think the other thing is when you praise somebody, reward them, they tend to do the same behavior over again and try to do it even better. And so when we talk about him, how he's well he's doing defensively and how dependable he is, and everybody should thank him for covering up for your mistake, I think he likes those kind of things. And I even think something as simple as uh, 
grading the tape and listing who's the defensive player of the game. He likes to see his name go up there, as, as everybody does. And, uh, but I think he has uh, bought into it. I've, I want him to score every basket, around the basket. You know, if he goes out and shoots threes, the next horn you see will him, be him coming out, because that's not who he is. Uh, but he understands that, and uh, I, I'm really, really proud of what he's done for our team. Jaden Daly from Daily Dose of Hoops. Roy, have you seen any extra motivation from Cam being that he's the senior that wasn't on the national championship team from two years ago? <laughs> well, I'm sure Kenny and Luke talked to him about it enough that he's probably got that motivation. They live together, you know, so they talk about the greatest time of their lives, the three-week stretch in 2017 that he didn't experience. But uh, I think Cameron is a youngster who has really wanted to be successful and has really worked extremely hard, as I said earlier. I don't know if anybody's had as much pain as he has had during his college career. He's very, uh, uh, I, I almost call him an old man, you know, but he's very mature uh, about everything he does and looking at everything, looking at the big picture. So I think he's hungry, but uh, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if those guys say some things to him away from me, but I just know he's personally really hungry himself. Hey, Coach, Rick Russo from yep. uh, Knoxville WVLT. Uh, Tennessee, of course, is here. Coach, I wanted to get your thoughts on the job Rick's done with that team as they make their move here in the NCAA tournament. Rick's a good friend, a really good coach, a guy that I enjoy being around. Uh, we were in Maui together last year, I guess, and he started out poorly and they got better and better. We played him in Knoxville. Uh, he's a guy from Western North Carolina that I do really enjoy. Uh, and I've watched his teams and uh, Williams and Schofield, those guys, they get after you competing on every possession. And I, I got to think Rick pushes him to do that all the time. So I think he's done a fantastic job. And uh, he's one of those guys that when I see him, I just start grinning. So that's a pretty good legacy, too. <laughs> Mark Herman from Newsday in New York. Just to follow up on what you were saying before about how much more experienced players are before they ever get to you. Yeah. How does that affect your dynamic? Is it, is it always a good thing? Is it sometimes a bad thing? You know, I think it's good to have a little uh, new enthusiasm. Sometimes I call it youthful exuberance. I think it's good to have that on your team and not just be, oh, we've done this before kind of thing. Uh, but also, I like the old guys to understand how lucky we are that you're still doing it, you know, that we're back. I, I loved, I mean, really did. And, and we don't have a lot of cam. Well, we have the only ones who have our in-house cameras around. But at my house, when we're watching the selection show, the guys, when they announced North Carolina as the number one seed and put our name up there, they jumped up, and it was spontaneous. And I'm not of their generation. And I tell them, I'm glad I'm not, okay? I'm three or four generations away. But I watched some teams being announced, and it's not a cut the way some of the kids do it, but I saw teams jumping up, and everybody had their phone in their hand taking a picture of their freaking self. <laughs> I mean, come on now. It's, it's, sometimes it's got to be being excited about your group. And this group, old of, you know, the old guys like Cam and Luke and Kenny, or the young guys, Nasir and Leaky and Kobe, they were genuinely pleased, enthusiastic about what went on. And I, I like that. That's not a cut against anybody else. It's just I really appreciate the way our guys handled it. We're good. Thanks very much for your good Thanks, questions. Thanks, guys. Even better answers. And Coach remember, Williams. I want to know where, <laughs> if we don't make it, I'm going to knock you down. <laughs>
Welcome to the media conference for the Washington Huskies. Uh, Matisse Thibault and Jalen Howell. Noel. Our Noel. Pardon me? Noel. No, I'm sorry. Noel. Um, our guest, and uh, we will have, please, questions that are directly to the players. Don't ask for a group answer, just one or the other, and then, or say, please both comment and then ask one specifically so that our cameras and microphones can keep up with everybody. Uh, if you need media coordinates for the satellites, uh, they are one of these sheets of paper, and as soon as I find it, boy, I'm going to share it with you again. Um, Galaxy 17, transponder 20A. Downlink frequency is 12086.5 V. 12086.5 V. You guys got that memorized? Good? All right. Uh, questions for the players? Go ahead. Percy Allen with the times. And um, for T's first and then Jalen. Um, just after taking a look at Sam Merrill, maybe on tape or, you know, sort of as you guys sort of get into Utah State a bit, what jumps out at you about first Sam and then how, how they run their offense? Um, first thing for me is just firstly how, how talented he is as a scorer and just how, how he does it so effortlessly. He's, he's able to put up big numbers and it's not, it's not by forcing things or taking bad shots. He's, He's a, he's a great team player. And then also to add on to that, their team as a whole plays really well together. And I mean, it, it's, it's cool to see, but yeah, they, they play well together and they, they have a great leader in Sam and a great score with him as well. Yeah, uh, he really moves the ball very well. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't really force a lot of shots and uh, that's something that you really need as a leader. And so, yeah, he's, he's been having a great year and he's a, he's a really good player and he's been leading that team very well this whole year. With the Columbus Dispatch, uh, Matisse, just how have you guys gone about shaking off a loss in the conference tournament and then entering March, where a lot of teams come in really hot? I mean, it's always the next game. You can't win or a loss. You can't really dwell on it. So for us, it's just in, we moved on the second the, the buzzer went off and we got back on the bus. And I know we're we're really excited to be here and have this opportunity to play in March Madness. For Matisse and then uh, Jalen, uh, it's been. Since 2011, I believe that uh, Washington's, since Washington's been back to the tournament, you guys were in late elementary school, or early middle school, maybe then. Do you, uh, either of you guys have any memory of that? And then your thoughts about being the ones to get Washington back here? Do you remember that? I, I do not remember that. I was, 2011, I was probably 10 years old. Probably somewhere in the, my backyard, maybe shooting. Uh, I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> you remember? No, no. I just think for for me, and I, I know for John as well. It's just it's really exciting to be able to bring to bring UW back to this to this stage because I know that that Husky basketball has been known as being a great program, and and they went through a stretch where they were they were able to get out play play in March Madness for a little while, and it's been it's been too long, and we're just really happy to be able to bring us back. What's your campus experience been like since Sunday? I mean, obviously there's a high level of excitement among the other students who are on campus, and, and uh, you guys are heroes for at least a few days, and hopefully more. Um, it's, it's been cool to just see over the course of the year just how, how that people have just band together and just been supporting us, whether it's from professors to students to staff members. And it's been, it's been really cool to just see how, how people are getting excited again about our basketball team. Good. Matisse, what's the biggest difference you've seen in Jalen from when he was a freshman um, coming into this season? What's the biggest development you've seen in his game? That's a tough one. Um, we've talked about it a little bit. When, when Jalen got, got to UW, he, I mean, he was just a killer. He knew how to score. And so his freshman year was a lot of that. And you saw it with like, his first game. Like, who comes out their college debut and scores 30 points? Like, that's insane. And I think his biggest development is just being He's become a greater, like a well-rounded player. He thinks the game at a way higher level. He makes everyone around him a lot better now. And 
just to, to be able to see how far he's come from that from that first year and just one year really has been really impressive. Uh, Stephen Bailey with the Syracuse Post. I wanted to ask you guys about Mike Hopkins. Um, what have you seen him do in the last two years to start to maybe set his culture with the program? And you know, he just got signed to an extension. Where, where do you see that development potentially going? Well, well, first, I would love to say Coach Hopkins has been one of the best coaches uh, I could ever ask for. Um, and, you know, when he comes in day in and day out, he works very hard on, on everything. He loves all of us. We love him. And we just love coming in and, and working hard for him. And, you know, uh, uh, the, first, the first year was, was, was exciting and for him to come in, and especially this year, uh, with just the energy he gives us. He brings us all as a team, uh, brings us together even more as a, as a family. Uh, that's really one thing he, he really harps on is that we're all family, and that's what we all have been. Sorry. Where do you see maybe that, that culture and the growth continuing to go? It's been good. We were actually we were joking about walking in here um, about how he's a player's coach. And I think that's a huge thing. And I think that going forward is that he's, his ability to build relationships with his guys. And I mean, we've only been with him for two years. But the guys who start off with him to see how their relationships grow going into their third and fourth years and just being able to use that as a recruiting point going forward is because we all know that we love him, and, and it's just becoming more and more known throughout the country that he's a great guy and a better coach. And to the family that he's created at UW has been great, and I know we can't wait to see where it goes from here. Just to follow up quickly, he's obviously coaching. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, just to follow up quickly, um, he's, a, he's got a ton of NCAA tournament experience. What has that messaging been like from him? And when you mentioned him being a player's coach. Like, from, for the, from the experience perspective, like, how has he messaged to you guys kind of in Columbus? You want both? I'll take it. Either one, both. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, I think it, it's exciting to have a coach. And I think more importantly, our coaching staff has a lot of experience in the tournament and has had a lot of success. And being with people who have been here and done it at the highest level, it's, it's pretty special because none of us players have been able to play at this level. And to, to have that like comforting force in our coach and our coaching staff, knowing that they know what it's like, what to expect, is. It's pretty reassuring and, and, like I said, comforting to have. Adam Rittenberg with ESPN for, for Matisse. So Utah State's coach compared you to Deion Sanders and how you cover the court. I'm just wondering, what is it about this defense that's allowed certain things in your game or just natural things you have to, to, to blossom the way it has? These guys. I mean, seriously, like I, I, we play a zone and, it, and these guys load up the backside so I'm able to go and uh, make plays and try and chase the ball around a little bit. And that's been, that's huge for me because just trying to be disruptive, I, ha I have to be able to go and get out and gamble sometimes and kind of put, put our team in some tough situations. And, and they do an incredible job of having my back. And, and honestly, they, they make great plays out of that. So I think for my own personal success, a lot of it's had to do with one, Coach Hop, and then two, just the four guys I got on the court who have my back at all times. When you, when you were growing up, is that the style of play you had? Or is that something you grew into when your body <laughs> grew. I actually, when I, when I was young, I used to, whenever my teams would press, they'd throw me in the middle of the zone, and I would just kind of run around, just play like free safety, trying to pick off as many passes as possible. So you really were Deion. So. <laughs> yeah. Never actually played football. Um, for each of you, what is the absolute goofiest thing Hop has done? Whether practice, on the bus, in team meal, whatever. <laughs> that is a good question. That's a great question. Um, there's so many, so many highlights with this man. Feel uh, free to protect your playing time at this point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, man, I would, I don't know, that was a tough question. I could think of plenty. Uh, can you dig up any like this? <laughs> he, he, he has, um, sometimes he'll go on his little tangents, rants, and, and he'll start reenacting what us players did on the court and uh. just kind of making fun of us. And one time he was, he was frustrated at one of our guys because he, he grabbed on the rim and got an offensive interference. And he was reenacting that play in our film room. And like, he, he jumped up and punched one of the little ceiling panels and like shifted it so there was a hole and like it didn't get fixed for like weeks. Uh, that was pretty funny. <laughs> oh, I got one. Um, 
he, we have this little bat um, that symbolizes our tougher together uh, saying. Um, so like sometimes he'll get like kind of angry and um, he'll kind of pull it out, kind of just like point at us, like and tell us like everything we're like doing wrong. And uh, one day he kind of just like pointed at us and kind of, you know, held it up like this. So everybody's kind of thinking, oh, oh, he's about to hit somebody. <laughs> but um, um, he kind of just put it up and just walked out the room and didn't say nothing. And we're all just looking around like, okay, what is he? What is he about to do? Is he about to go break something in our locker room, or is he about to come back and really start swinging on us? <laughs> so yeah, that's one. That was one that can I could actually whew, crazy. He didn't no. swing on nobody. No, Another no, thing no, that he no. does a lot that we we kind of don't think anything of it anymore is like he'll just drop and do push-ups for like no reason. Like he'll just get really excited and just start doing push-ups. <laughs> he's done it in press conferences. I think in his first one at UW, he dropped down and did a couple. But yeah, he's push-ups are his thing. Well, we can look forward to that in a few minutes. Do we, <laughs> we have any other questions for the players? Go ahead. Is there, um, do, do you guys think, you know, of anyone, either on your team or on their team, is there an X factor in this game, you know, that maybe it's somebody who doesn't, isn't getting, who isn't on this podium or, you know, who isn't getting a lot of attention, but, but could be a big difference in this game? And I could start with uh, Tisa and then head to Jalen. Um, I don't know, for, for us it's kind of, we're pretty special in the way that it could be any guy for any game. And we've, we've shown that like throughout the season, it doesn't really matter. We have guys who step up, come off the bench. We have starters who step up, usually don't score that much. And I think that makes us a pretty special team because it, it can come from anyone on any night. And then as for um, Utah State, they, they, uh, they have a lot of guys who aren't very well known. And they, they I mean, if you look at the numbers, they have some really, really talented guys, and I don't think that a lot of people across the country know, know much about them, but I know they're going to start hearing about their names coming up pretty soon. And I think that us respecting the scout and just being aware of our coverages will help us a lot because they got some firepower that just isn't much, talked about much. Yeah, well, like T said, uh, we have uh, a team that really has a lot of guys that can, it can be on any given night. So... Uh, everybody's going to come out and play hard. And that's one thing that, that we really take pride in. And for the other team, they have a lot of guys as well. They're not as known, uh, if they, but they won the championship for a reason. And they're a really good team. You guys were terrific. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. Coach Hopkins in two minutes. Thank you. Coach Mike Hopkins, head coach of the Washington Huskies. Your thoughts, questions? Coach, let's go ahead and start with a, a statement about how happy you are to be here. Okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, just so blessed and grateful to have the opportunity to be in the NCAA tournament. Uh, the last two years have been uh, an incredible journey uh, with our seniors, uh, sticking with the program. and. Uh, really working hard and having a really good year and getting an opportunity to play for a national championship. It's really, really special. It's one of those feelings that uh, 
not only now, but for the future you want to have for the rest of your life. Matisse and Jalen have mentioned that uh, you've done push-ups at press conferences, so we'll, <laughs> we'll leave that up to you later when we finish up with the questions. Go ahead. Um, just how uh, Im important or maybe even awkward was it to get your contract done during the season before the NCAA tournament, maybe to get that out of the way? What, you know, was, it, was the timing great or was this kind of where for you wanted me, to do For it? me, it's a simple, you know, I've, I've always believed in surrounding yourself with, with great people and I, I have at the University of Washington. I'm excited to be there uh, for a long time, uh, but this is all about the kids. This is the, the experience for the kids to have an opportunity to, you know, hopefully finish out what has been a successful season. It's not about me. Never has been. And uh, next question. Nice. Do you do you think this though sends some type of a message as to uh, the school's commitment to you and then your commitment to the school? I just like I said, surround yourself with great people and I'm with an incredible university, and I love the kids that I coach and. Um, just really blessed and lucky to be there, be the head coach. Hi, Mike. Mitch Stacy from the Associated Press. Uh, it's been eight years, I believe, since Washington's been to the tournament. Can you talk about what that means to you and your players to be the ones to bring the team back here and what, how important that was on, when you were back on campus and that sort of thing? Well, I think, yeah, you know, I, I really believe in, like, the score takes care of itself. And what does that mean? It means, you know, you surround yourself with great people. I got an incredible staff. And you just try to get better every day. And, uh, you know, you never know. People had asked me, you know, are you, you know, is the, the speed of where you're at right now, does that matter? Did you think it would be this fast? And to be honest with you, you, you just focus on how we're going to get better. And so to see these guys uh, grow, um, especially the seniors and our young guys, and to keep getting better and to keep getting better. You know, you never think about the eight, it was eight years in the NCAA tournament. Your goal is to get an opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament because your ultimate goal is a chance to win a national championship. That's what March Madness is all about. And so for me to have been a part of a whole group to get them to get that opportunity and to feel that is really, really special. Mike, you've been to 18 tournaments, I think, as an assistant coach. Yep. Um, is it different as the head coach, finally, especially since you were going to be the coach designate at yeah. Syracuse? I don't think it's different. Um, you know, the feeling uh, is here. You know, a lot of the players, you know, uh, Cam Dollar was a national champion at UCLA. Uh, Dave Rice was a national champion at UNLV, so our staff has experienced it. And what you're trying to do is lead these young men to understanding what it takes to have a chance to be successful and to have a chance to be in this tournament. And, you know, to see them walk in that locker room and seeing Washington and seeing their name tag and, and uh, watching the tournament today, which I think today and tomorrow are the greatest days in sport. Yeah. And to be a part of that, it's special. Um, the one thing I've learned about being successful in the tournament is it's special, it's great, but nothing changes. You know, we talked about don't eat the cheese. It's about focusing in, and there's one truth. To win a game, you've got to go out and you've got to execute your game plan. You've got to do it together. And when we've done that, we've been a successful team this season. Uh, Stephen Bailey with the Syracuse Post Standard. Uh, curious, what, has there been any kind of uh, messaging with people from Syracuse, with Jim? And if so, what have those interactions kind of been like? And any, and any thought you might have ma matched up with them going into this? Uh, you know what, um, obviously Syracuse raised me. Um, it was a huge part of my life. Uh, I know Coach Beheim um, as well, I think, as anybody in the business. And I know he's proud watching. But I also know he's preparing his team uh, just like we are. And uh, I'm sure, um, you know, after the season, we'll get together and review the season and try to get better. But. Uh, not a lot of communication other than I know he's rooting for us and I know we're rooting for them. Sean Harrison with the Herald Journal. Just curious about how much you know about Utah State and some of the, maybe some of the concerns you have facing Utah State. Well, I think a lot of concerns. They're, uh, they're a heck of a team, you know. Um, 
Sam Merrill is one of the best players that nobody knows about in the country. You're talking about a guy who's got double the assists of anybody on their team, and he's the combo guard. You're talking about a guy who averages over 20 points a game. I mean, he goes to the foul line. He, he's a great shooter. But not only that, if he's not open, he shares it. And uh, there's not too many players like that in the country. Nemus Keita, you know, a guy almost cl averages close to a double-double and, you know, averaging three shot blocks a game. Uh, I remember hearing about him in the middle of the year. They were talking about this great center at Utah State. Uh, where did he come, where'd he come from? Who recruited him? Who did this? Uh, and obviously, Craig Smith. Uh, he's done an, a tremendous job. That league is very, very good. And to be able to win the way that they did uh, is a credit to them. And it's going to be a heck of a challenge. Um, and they pose a lot of challenges. Is there an additional challenge for you being so west and and coming into the Midwest uh, from a, just a, a time adjustment? I don't think, I mean, yeah, I, no, I think these kids, uh, they go to bed late. They've been studying, we've had finals. <laughs> these guys, just to have the opportunity to be here and to play in such an incredible tournament and uh, to play against the best competition in the country, that's what you're trying to do and we have that opportunity. Nice. I know you, you said a little bit about the contract situation, but Aside from surrounding yourself with good people and trying to get the players better, what about this is gratifying to you from a standpoint of being a, a career-long assistant in Syracuse and then making this statement with these, this team these last two years? It's got to be a great degree of satisfaction for you personally. You, you know, I think at the end of the day, it, there's no question. Uh, you know, it's all about, you know, you're leading a bunch of young men and a staff to win. and. And, and to learn what it takes to be successful in life, and they go hand in hand. And, uh, you know, we've learned how to win. We've played together. We've played as a unit. We've played for something greater than ourselves. Everybody's sacrificed a little of, of each other to have this successful season. And that's the type of culture that we're trying to create. So to see that and what you're selling every day on a day-to-day -day basis and you're hammering and hammering into these kids and then seeing it work and them seeing it work and having success, that's what it's all about. And uh, just, just so proud of our guys. Anybody else? Tremendous job. Thank you. Good questions, thank Coach. You thank you very much. Thank you very much. Go dogs. <laughs>
I'll, I'll just uh, hold up there for a little bit. Yeah. Nope. 135 on Saturday.
This is the press conference of the Iona Gales, all Natalie dressed, looking good, and ready to go. <laughs> uh, just a reminder to please direct your questions directly to one player. If you do want to hear a group response, please ask for one of the players by name initially so that we can uh, keep some kind of order and that our technical people uh, can keep an idea of who's on what mic and our camera people know who to have their wonderful face on each and every television in America that's watching right now. Uh, a reminder that we do have satellite coordinates. They may change, but uh, for today, Galaxy 17, transponder 20A, downlink frequency 12086.5V. And with that, we're ready for your questions for Iona. Start here in the second row. Ron McFadden from the Ionian. Uh, this question is for Tawan. Uh, going back to the MAC tournament, uh, MAC championship, you said it was a dream for you growing up to play in the NCAA tournament. Now you're a, a day away from that dream becoming to a reality, taking on Chapel Hill. What are you, what are you feeling right now? Uh, <clears throat> I was excited to uh, get the opportunity, but now it's time to buckle down. It's time to lock in. Tomorrow's game day. We're going to treat it like any other game. Go ahead. How you doing? George Willis, New York Post. Uh, Ricky, to you, uh, what was your coach telling you when you guys were 7 and 15? Uh, just just keep playing high on the basketball. Keep sticking together. Don't give up. Don't never settle for plays. Don't never take a play off. And just, just play your best and give it your all. Uh, uh, Ricky, uh, you, um, last year was Duke. This year, UNC Chapel Hill. What does that uh, mean to you to take on to not only ACC powerhouse, but national powerhouses? Uh, it means a lot. Now it's a big stage. Now I'm just going to try and come out and try and get my team a win. Mark Herman from Newsday. Uh, we'll start with Ricky, but I'd like to get everybody's opinion on this. Uh, your coach has a, sort of a larger than life personality. How does his personality impact you guys and the way you play? Uh, he, he, he comes every day prepared to, prepared to work. He, he tells us to go hard every day, to keep getting better, keep getting in the gym. Tuan? Uh, <clears throat> he works hard uh, night in and night out, uh, whether it's film or studying a different team or just, just letting us know what spots are open on the floor against different teams. So, I mean, that work ethic rubs off on us. And uh, we, we just come in and, and, and try to work hard and as hard as he works every night. Um, it's like like my teammates said. It's a lot to do with work ethic. You know, he instills that in us to just play hard on the, every single um, possession, and we just try to come in and practice and stuff every single day, and just do what we got to do in order to come together and be the best team that we possibly can. <coughs> Jaden Daly from Daly Dosa Hoops, Ricky, as one of two players on this team that's been on the stage before. What's the message been like in the locker room with these guys getting them ready for? What, what lies ahead on this stage? And just give it your all, all or nothing. We got to play 40 minutes just like they got to play for 40 minutes. It's a big game for us, bigger than any other game we played this season. So we just got to try and come out and get a win. Mm -hmm. uh, this question is for Ashante, but uh, for everyone as well. Uh, going back to when you guys were 2-9, and nine, um, if, if I would have told you guys you were about to play UNC Chapel Hill tomorrow in the NCAA tournament, would you guys still believe it even during that tough stretch? We always thought we was a good team. That has never was the case. We always knew that it was just minor things that we had to get together. Mm -hmm. And we always had each other's back. Like I said, you know, this team has always been resilient and always had each other's back. We never once looked and said, oh, we can't do this. We always felt as though if we just got on the same page, that would be a scary sight. And now we're here. So we're just trying to go out there. We're not trying to go out here just to be here. We're not happy to be here. We want to get a win. And that's what we all tell each other on a consistent basis. Ross Martin inside Carolina, love for all the players. We start with Tawan, though. Um, what have you seen from UNC on tape? What challenges do they pose? And kind of break down what you see about them on the court. Uh, they're a fast team. Uh, they like to get up and down. But I mean, we like to get up and down. So uh, it's going to be a, a challenge that, that we want. <laughs> uh, it's a big game. We know it's a big game. Uh, We're we ready for the challenge, though. Asante? 
I like Tawansa. You know, they play fast. They're kind of big. Bigger, they're bigger than us, but, you know, like you said, we, we want the challenge. So we just have to come out and play our basketball. You know, that's what got us here. So we're not going to change how we play. But, you know, we're going to go out there and do what we have to do, and hopefully we come out with a win tomorrow. Ricky? I mean, they just touched on everything that I was going to say. So I, don't, I, mean, I, I agree with them. Uh, this question is for Ricky. Um, how much, uh, what, what are you from Phil? How, what are your impressions of freshman guard Kobe White? And how much are you looking forward to that matchup? Uh, I mean, it's just, just try and get, try and stop him. I mean, I know he's a good player. He's been a good player all year for North Carolina. Now it's a big challenge for me, just to try and come out and try and get it stuck. Asante, just more specifically, what are you guys doing better now than you were when you were uh, struggling so much? Well, a lot of people don't know, this team didn't come together until like school started. So it was kind of the chemistry that was our biggest problem mm -hmm. in the beginning. It, wasn't, it had nothing to do with talent or anything. We always worked hard. It was just our chemistry. So now I feel as though we're moving the ball a lot better. We're shooting the ball way a lot better, you know. So I just, and we're also playing defense very well too. So that's a big emphasis that coaches gives to us on a daily basis. And that's really what it is. Ricky, you mentioned chemistry. How much of that is chemistry that is being your team in the locker room together, learning about guys you know that just came together, and how much of it's actually on the court? Yeah, chemistry definitely was a big problem for us in the beginning of the year. As he said, we didn't really have a team in the summertime to gel together. So as the year went on, we just had to just keep fighting, just keep getting better as a team, and just keep gelling together, keep getting to know each other. And that's what we did. Now, now we're here. Anything else from anybody? Go ahead. Uh, George Wallace again, New York uh, Post. Uh, as you started to win games, could you feel yourself getting better as a team? How did the, the winning the game sort of uh, improve your confidence as a team? Uh, uh, oh, me? Uh, I think. Go ahead. Um. <laughs> Asante will start, and then we'll go down, we'll go down the line. Oh, um, man. We always. Like I said, we always felt as though we was a good team. Um, as, as time goes on, we could see, even the games that we were losing, we could see that we were getting better. Mm -hmm. It was just certain things that came down the stretch that might have made us lose the game or little, little things that we need to get together. But like I said, we always felt as though we were a good team. And once Coach always told us when we started clicking that it was going to be like a good one. So that's what, that's what happened down the stretch. Tuan? Uh, I always felt like winning fixes a lot of uh, problems. <laughs> so uh, as we as we started to win, we started to gel, started to become more of a brotherhood than, than a team. And uh, I think that helped. Is that easier said than done, Ricky? Yeah, win, yeah winning, it, it takes more. It takes a lot to win. You know, everybody you're playing against a different team every every day. So it just you just got to come out and, and give it your all. You find it difficult. I mean, there's so many questions that have been here about chemistry, and it's you know it's kind of tough. You throw guys in a room, and say, oh, you, "You guys be friends." <laughs> it, it has to happen organically, right? Yeah, right. So that's that's what really what happens. I mean, we all was new to each other uh, since the uh, school year, so we just had to learn learn what each other could do and just play as a team, play out on the basketball. Go ahead. So um, did you watch the uh, game last year when UMBC beat Virginia? And whether or not you watched it, what do, what do you think of it, of a 16 beating a number one mm -hmm. seed? Uh, of course I watched it. <laughs> uh, I've always been a big fan of March Madness, so of course I watched it. But uh, uh, I think a 16 beating a one, it happened before, it can happen again. So uh, we're we going to come out, and we're going to play our hearts out, and we're going to give it our all, and hopefully we can we can – we can get it done. Really well spoken. Nice job. Congratulations on the tournament. Thank you. And uh, we're going to talk to uh, Coach Kluse in just a few minutes. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
It's time for our interview with Coach Kloos, and he's going to have a, uh, a resounding statement uh, of comments to open, and then we'll ask uh, questions and keep the same format, please. Coach? Uh, we're just really excited to be here and be playing against North Carolina in their storied program and coach, and really excited for the challenge. My players have worked really hard for this all year, and I'm really happy for them because hard work paid off for them. Go ahead. One of the themes that we really got from your players was that during that initial struggle uh, with a losing record in the first half of the season or so, that you really gave them the belief, yeah, yeah, this could be a special group. Coaches always don't do that. Oh, I firmly believe that. I think we went through a lot. Two of our first 11 games were on the road. We played at home on November 6th and not again until December 30th. So. We had a lot of learning about each other doing a lot of growing up to do, but I liked the pieces that we had. More importantly, I liked how they came to practice every day, even after tough losses and injuries and all that. They worked their tail off every day. And as a coach, you're kind of looking around, is the shoe going to drop if we don't win soon? And they never gave up. So I, I really did believe at some point, if we got healthy, we'd have a chance to turn it around. Go ahead. Uh, Ryan McFadden from the Ionian. Uh, coach, what has been your message of to your players ahead of this game, especially for the guys who are playing in their first NCAA tournament? Just to enjoy the moment, to go out there and play really hard, worry about each possession, and don't look at the big picture right now. Look at one possession at a time when you're in the game, and play on a basketball for 40 minutes. Ross Martin with Inside Carolina. Um, Coach, when you look at <clears throat> UNC, what challenges they pose? Obviously, the speed is what the players said. Yeah. Anything else that stands out? Yeah, they have, they have a lot of challenges, obviously, for the size of our team. But uh, their speed getting back, first of all, offensive rebounds, that they're not trying to limit them from getting too many of those. Um, we can't turn the ball over. We've been very good with it as of late. And if we continue to do that, I think we can get some good shots. We have five guys out there that can stretch and knock down three. So we're confident in the way we're playing offensively right now. And we're going to have to play a top-notch game, but I, don't, I expect nothing less from our guys. Jared Fialco, WRAL-TV out of Raleigh. Many a moons ago, you coached Danny Green in high school. Yeah. I was curious if there were any good off-the-wall Roy Williams recruiting stories when you first ran into each other that you could share. In all fairness, the first time I met him, we had just won the Beach Ball Classic. And uh, I met Coach Williams, and I had my two little boys and my wife with me, and he was uh, a gracious, terrific man to meet. And when I just ran into him today, it's the first time I've really talked to him since that day, and he's the same exact way. Um, I love how hard he works his players. I mean, he, I, I thanked him for making Danny Green a pro because we entrusted Danny with him, and I knew it was the right spot for Danny because Danny was the kind of young man who would just work really hard and listen to a coach, and I didn't know any coaches better in the business than him, in all fairness, so it was the right place for him. Um, so I don't have any of those other kind of stories, but I really, again, it was tremendous Danny was there, and it's a tremendous honor privilege, but boy, am I looking forward to tomorrow. <laughs> hey, Tim, George Willis, New York Post. Uh, a lot of the players talked about the need to build chemistry. Right. But what kinds of things did you do to help sort of build that chemistry between you? Um, that's a good one. Sometimes adversity builds chemistry. I know it's going to sound a little crazy, but sometimes it does. And sometimes you find out what their true beliefs are individually and what they're looking for out of it when things are bad. So not only can you get a read on players when things are going well, but I think when things are going bad, you have to try to find out what makes each player tick and then how to bring it together. And the players themselves had to want to bring it together. And early on, in fairness, they were fighting each other a lot. And I think that chemistry grew to where we want to win and we're going to do it the right way. And our senior leadership and Ricky McGill and EJ Crawford uh, as a junior started like telling guys, you got to do what we're asking you to do. You got to work harder. We got to continue to just develop and don't worry, it's going to be okay. Like we've been through some tough times before in our program and found a way. And I think they helped start the belief and then it got infectious within our team. Uh, Coach, uh, what are your impressions of USC freshman guard Kobe White and that matchup promise he possesses? No, oh, he's terrific. He gets down the floor in three to four dribbles in about th two to three seconds. He's down the other end and he makes plays for them. And our job is to, to get back on D and slow him down and, and build a wall in front of him and not let him just have his way the whole game. And I think Ricky McGill is and, and Tawan Agee and E.J. Crawford and Asante Gist and Ben Perez and anyone else we play is up to that challenge. I think we know what we have to do. Whether we're capable of is going to be whether or not we have a chance in this game, and I think we're capable of doing it. Mark Herman from Newsday. Hi, Tim. How are you? What do you, you have a lot of guys who maybe aren't going to get recruited by North Carolina. What do they get out of playing at Iona? What do they get from playing in this Iona gets a lot of things. First of all, people around the country get to know who Iona is, not just our basketball program, but our school. It helps our enrollment. It helps our applications. 
uh, for us recruiting wise it helps us recruit on, recruit on a broader base because more people know about who we are and the success we've had and our style of play and if you want to have a chance to play in the NCAA tournament I own is a school that you should be looking at if you want to do some special things and get a great education I don't know if you saw the piece on uh, the final four for that academic piece that came out I own and made it to the final four and that if you take all the programs in this tournament so I think we, we bring a lot to the table and this you know, neither here nor there for, the, for tomorrow but I just have to get your your thoughts on this what do you think about the the year that your alma mater had this year in basketball? Which one? <laughs> Hofstra. <laughs> I know. I'm just kidding with you. I thought they did a terrific job. Joe did a great job. The team was terrific. Uh, I thought they were going to beat North Carolina State the other night. I was rooting for them. They were real close to getting in the tournament. I had wish they had won that championship game, but they they've really turned the corner with this program over there. Jaden Daly from Daily Dose of Hoops. Tim, you've been on the stage five times before. This is number six. Is this one? any more rewarding than the ones that came before it, given what this group has gone through and where they stood a month ago? I think you can sit there when two and nine, and I said it to my players, and, you know, and, I, and I meant it. Just imagine what the story would be if we go from two and nine to getting to play in the NCAA tournament. And you're looking at yourself, and everyone's looking at me like, are you crazy? And part of me saying to myself, am I crazy? But reality is when you do that and come back, and you can look back from where we were to where we are now, it feels like it's been several years, not a few months. And I'm so proud of these guys because I've never coached a team that was seven games under, you know, 500 and won a championship. In fairness, my 30-something years of coaching, it's never happened. So to me, it was special because it was something brand new that we, the players really, really worked hard for. My assistant coaches worked their tails off to give these guys this opportunity. So I'm pr so proud of all of them and so happy for all of them to get, get this moment. We sense from hearing them that they didn't want to give up because you didn't want to give up. Well, my father and mother did not raise me to ever give up, and that goes with my whole family, brothers and sisters. We were born one way to fight the tough fight and fight through life's adversities, and I truly believe that's what makes you strong, and I think you find out what you're about at those points, and you have to try to help people along the way and guide and lead people, and that's what we're supposed to do as coaches. That sounds very much like an old Iona coach. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I was fortunate enough to know him. Terrific. Very well done. Yes. Uh, coach, what's it been like to see uh, Ricky McGill develop from where he was as a freshman until now? Now, he, four, four MAC championships, four MCA tournament appearances. What's it been like to see him develop as a player in the person? Again, I'm going to go to work ethic on it. Uh, being raised with the work ethic I was, there's nothing better to me than see somebody work for everything they've gotten. He played sparingly as a freshman. You know the story about us saying he maybe want, should look at another school at the end of freshman year because he wasn't working up to our standards. And Ricky took the challenge of starting to work harder and got better and better and better each year. And that's what we're about. Our program is about guys who want to work hard to become special, guys who want to become college graduates and a chance to play, play professionally and to enjoy their college experience. And he really has done it to the fullest, and he really represents Iona basketball. To follow that up, Tim, after Scott just got picked up by the Lakers a couple of hours ago, to have Scott, Momo, AJ, and now Ricky, how, mu how much of an accomplishment is it for this program to turn out such a great lineage of point guards? I think it's an accomplishment for them. I'm, I'm glad we're a part of it, but they're the ones who put in the hard work. We may lead them, but they're the ones who had to get into the gym and put all those hours in, plus the hours on their own and all the training that goes with, with Kelly Shaver, our strength and conditioning coach. They've all done it. I'm really happy for Scott. And again, someone who's kind of fighting, fighting, fighting for that opportunity over years, had injuries, never gave up, and here he is going to be playing with the Lakers for the next 10 days and hopefully more. Tim, you mentioned a couple times you made reference to the way you were brought up and that work ethic. Can you describe that, that household and what, what, what that was like? You know? Honestly, it was the best thing that anybody could ever dream of. Um, the youngest of five siblings, two parents in the house that worked their tail off. They were never able to go to college or anything like that. They worked to put food on the table for their families. They were the first generation here. Our, myself and my siblings were the first ones to go to college. Everything was about working the hard and doing your best and really competitive. Now everyone, it's not just my dad and my brothers and my, and my sister, my mom was ultra competitive. You know, everything we did, there was a winner and loser. Every time we were sitting down at the table for dinner, there was some kind of game going on that was being challenged and we were being challenged. And then my father would have great stories, but he would make up facts that we knew were made up and he would just tell you, you know, go to the library and prove it. Now, I could swear, like I thought my father worked in the library because I heard that line so many times. But he just wanted us to be able to stand up for ourselves and find our own beliefs and fight through things. And I remember going home to him, like in today's day and age, if things weren't going well on a team or something like that, and me, I complained one time to him about it. He goes, get better. I don't care, get better. I'm like, you're right. 
And I think I've taken that philosophy with, through my family, and I was fortunate enough to have Coach Mars from St. Agnes High School have that same philosophy, so I was underneath him for four years as well. And I think that built the person I am, and obviously I think you know a little bit more about my family history. Going through those things, I had people, because of basketball, I'm here today because of the people in my lives, helped keep me on track through those hard times. And this gave me an outlet, and I also do believe that I'm, I'm here for a purpose. My purpose is to help young men have better lives. What did they do? What did, what did your folks do? My dad was an engineer for Sperry Rand for about 56 years with the same company. Uh, and my mom took care of everyone in the family. We always had a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, people who didn't have a place to stay were living with us. We had nine or ten people in the house with one bathroom. You know, so you, you had to learn a little bit of uh, a little different skills there, a little patience sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Anybody else? Uh, Coach, you, talk, you mentioned how you want your players to enjoy the moment. Well, what do you, how do you get your players not only to enjoy the moment, but also realize at the same time that we have a job to do um, tomorrow? Well, I think we have not changed how we work at things. We, the same way we're preparing for every other game. And everything we did this year was about the game in front of us. It was never about down the road what we could be. It was about what's happening in the game in front of us, how we're going to handle that, how we're going to get ready for it, how we're going to warm up for it, what we need to do in each four-minute segment and each play. So our, our whole thing to my players is that worry about the play you're involved with, not the, not the previous. Learn from the previous one, but don't dwell on it. Don't get upset about it. Don't look at the referees. Don't complain about it. Make the next play. If the ball's on the ground, dive on it. Like sometimes it's something that simple, taking a charge, diving on a loose ball, getting a 50-50 ball, takes away a lot of the, you know, the adrenaline that's flowing in a pregame situation like this. Basketball is basketball. If you're focused, once that game starts, you really don't see anything beyond the court. Like I wouldn't be able to tell you tomorrow if there's one person in the gym or 20,000, because once the game starts, it's all about right in front of you. And I think our players have learned to focus much better in that way as well. Because of all your preparation as a coach, can, can you enjoy the moment? You know, I am enjoying this. We had a little more time to, you know, a few more days than normal to, to prepare for this. And, and I think I'm just enjoying my family being here again and all the coaches' family and seeing it through their eyes as well. And some of my coaches have very young children. It's the first time they're going through it. So to watch their expressions as they see different things, it's great. And a lot of my players have never been here before. So I'm getting to live it all again through their eyes, and I just love it. That's great. Go ahead. You've given, uh, obviously given a lot of credit to your staff and the players, but do you feel like this is your best coaching job of your career? I'm not the one to judge that. All I know is, again, I don't ever give up on what we're doing. And, and I'm going to tell you, it was one point in the season where I came home and I was kind of a little dejected with the work ethic and practice. And I, we had a game coming up in two days. And I half jokingly, but half maybe, you know what? I don't know if I'm going to watch that film tonight on this team because I'm so mad at these guys, they don't care. And my son turns to me and goes, hey, Dad, it doesn't matter what you think is going to happen. You're going to do your job just like you always have. And I love that response from him. I'm like, boy, he's been around me for a while, you know. And of course I did that. And, but it was great to hear from another voice saying, you're going to do your job because that's what you always do, and you're going to give it everything you have. This way they will too. We've, uh, we've hit the heart out on our satellite time. Thanks very much for your questions, Coach. Great luck to you. Thanks, Thanks very, very much. much. I appreciate your time. Thank you all.